Welcome uh, to uh, I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett. In this travelogue, we're going to start off at Whitehorse. We're going up to da Dawson City to take a look there, and then we're headed over to Chicken, Alaska. And uh, then we'll talk about two disasters. One uh, hammered the state of Alaska, and the other destroyed a city. So come on, let's uh, take a look at this. This young uh, whippersnapper is speaking to you a half century later. I made my first trip to the Yukon in Alaska in the 1960s, working as a tour guide for Greyhound. We ran three 23-day tours three times a summer from Calgary, Alberta, to Alaska and back. That is 69 days non-stop on a Greyhound bus. You know, uh, back in those days, I thought I knew everything. But really, the truth was, I knew nothing. You got to get a few whiskers on your face before you know anything. And the more whiskers you got, the more you know, the smarter you are. Let me uh, show you on the map uh, where we're heading in this travelogue. In this travelogue, we'll start at uh, Whitehorse. And we'll take the yellow line up to Dawson City. And then we'll loop back to the highway and go by a community called Chicken that's an interesting kind of a place, a tourist place. And then we'll go on up the highway, uh, Fairbanks, uh, and down to Anchorage and do the triangle in Alaska, and then come back to the highway and head south. We'll go south on this uh, Highway 37, the yellow line that uh, I made a travelogue on that highway. And, uh, okay, the uh, green uh, lines here are a couple of tourist or three tourist roads I thought were, were scenic places. Uh, one runs from Anchorage on down to uh, uh, Seward and Homer on the peninsula there. Another uh, uh, scenic place runs down to the uh, coast uh, to Valdez which is the head of the uh, Alaska pipeline. But uh, we'll come back down the highway here and before you get to the White Horse uh, turnoff there's a highway that runs down to the coast to a community called Haines. Haines, Alaska. And that road is, uh, that highway, uh, they're all paved highways. Uh, it's a very scenic road. We were there in the early spring, and there was a lot of uh, snow-capped mountains there. Uh, I'll show you a few photographs of it in the latter part uh, of this travelogue. Whitehorse uh, is the start of the famous dog sled uh, race uh, called the Yukon Quest that runs from Whitehorse to Fairbanks. Its uh, counterpart is a race called uh, the Iditarod that runs from Fairbanks on westward to Nome, Alaska uh, on the Bering Sea. Uh, both grueling races take a week to 10 days roughly uh, to run over 1,600 kilometers. Isles Canyon was flooded by a dam and the fierce Whitehorse Rapids uh, were uh, completely drowned out. In uh, uh, the days of the Klondike, uh, a wooden railway was built that carried supplies around and above the rapids. You can uh, tour the uh, SS Klondike uh, in Whitehorse or the Kino uh, here in Dawson City. A passenger service uh, was available, but the big money was in hauling uh, uh, minerals like zinc, lead, and silver uh, to Whitehorse. Sternwheelers were shallow draft uh, vessels uh, because in many places uh, the uh, Yukon River was a mix of shallow water and rapids. Uh, here are some of the uh, smarter people of Dawson City standing around. Uh, how do we know they're smarter? They all wear hats. The smarter people wear hats. This is the SS uh, Princess uh, Sophia. Uh, the ship that uh, went down and took the north with her. Uh, the greatest West Coast uh, marine disaster on record. Uh, they were actually yesterday's snowbirds. They were the leaders, pillars of the community, heads of mining operations, shipping executives, and business entrepreneurs in Dawson City. Every fall, they left uh, Dawson City and caught the ship uh, from Skagway to places like Vancouver, Seattle, and other points south for the winter. Americans and Canadians alike uh, partied and socialized the last uh, night in Skagway. Then the next morning, they boarded uh, 
the luxury good ship SS Princess Sophia for points south. Four hours later, in a blinding snowstorm and rough waters, they hit a reef. The ship was double-hulled, and there was no initial severe damage. The SOS quickly went out, and quickly seven rescue ships were at the scene. This uh, picture here is not the Sophia, but it's a similar ship hung up at another place another time. However, the Sophia was in a similar situation. The captain's decision was final. The wind and waves against the rocks were too risky to attempt uh, putting people into lifeboats and getting them to the waiting rescue ships. They would wait for a calmer uh, weather in the morning. But uh, a series of uh, a sense of dread set in. I'll read you part of a, a man's last letter uh, that they found uh, written to his loved one. It reads, uh, My own dear sweetheart, I am writing this, dear girl, while the boat is in grave danger. We struck a rock last night, which threw many from their berths. Women rushed out in their night attire. Some were crying. The force of the waves are terrible, making awful noises on the side of the boat. I uh, made my will this morning, leaving everything to you. The Eagle Lodge will take care of my remains. The uh, seas uh, calmed down uh, overnight, but all the rescue ships saw in the morning was the top mast of the Sophia sticking a meter or so out of the water. Huge ocean swells had lifted the ship loose from the rocks and winds turned it 180 degrees, grinding a hole through the double hull on the bottom. A final uh, desperate a wireless call went out from a passenger. And it said, uh, quote, For God's sake, hurry. The water is coming into my room. Uh, later, uh, divers found the bodies in the ship. Other uh, bodies washed ashore months later, hundreds of kilometers away. Time watches found on the victims stopped at the same time, which was 1750 on the metric clock or 550 p.m., roughly 40 hours after the Sophia had hit the reef. Uh, Canada's own Titanic was the forgotten voyage. The disaster was overshadowed by the relief and joy of the ending of World War I. Uh, no victim was buried in the Yukon. I searched uh, the Juneau Cemetery for grave sites, but they were grown over with vegetation and had long suffered neglect. I found only this one single plaque after kicking away the grass and debris. It was the end of an era. Dawson City never recovered. Today, it is more uh, of a tourist curiosity than a vibrant community. The uh, disaster changed a principle in uh, international law of the sea. Prior to the disaster, the captain's decision was final. Afterwards, final decisions in disasters were made by the rescue team. And uh, a final note, all legal actions against the ship owners, the Canadian Pacific, failed. It was another sad ending to a sad story. You can uh, cross the Yukon River at Dawson City and go on the top of the World Highway for uh, 170 kilometers uh, uh, over to uh, Chicken, Alaska. Chicken was originally called Ptarmigan after the birds in the area. People had trouble, however, spelling and pronouncing the word ptarmigan correctly, uh, so they resorted to simply calling the place chicken. You can read uh, some of the bird's characteristics here. Uh, it is the official bird of Nunavut, Newfoundland, Alaska, and Japan, uh, where it is a protected species there. Uh, its wings create a thundering noise on takeoff. It has a, a two-year lifespan, and it is quite nomadic, moving around, uh, causing its population numbers uh, to fluctuate in an area a great deal uh, from year to year.
Uh, this old uh, abandoned gold mine dredge uh, is the one near uh, Chicken. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, find these old dredges uh, uh, in, in quite a few different places in uh, both uh, the Yukon and Alaska. I was uh, between uh, Fairbanks and uh, Anchorage uh, looking at uh, Denali Mountain uh, on one of the rare days it is not shrouded in cloud cover. I was uh, not in the middle of the big uh, Alaska earthquake, uh, but I felt it, and I was uh, through that country shortly afterwards. At uh, uh, 9.2 on the Richter scale, it, it was the second most powerful earthquake ever recorded and it killed 131 Alaskans. Uh, this is the control tower uh, at Anchorage until uh, near uh, supper time, Good Friday, 1964. Keep your eye on the top of that tower. Same tower just afterwards. It dropped land two and a half meters at nearby Turnigan Arm, and uh, it raised land uh, nine meters near Kodiak, uh, about 400 miles to the south. That uh, tsunami, a uh, wave of water that came into Valdez, the deep sea port, was uh, unbelievable. There was an ocean freighter parked in there, and when the water went out of that port, it dropped that ocean freighter down onto the bottom sand of the deep water bay. And then the, the tsunami came back in again and lifted it up high. I heard a story, it was uh, the height of a, of a prairie grain elevator. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it did that three times. It set that ocean freighter down on the dry bottom bed of the deep sea port. There was a sailor on the deck of that boat, and I remember watching photographs by him uh, uh, with his video camera. It was going up and down. Uh, the trees and mountains were going up and down on his camera picture as the boat went up and down with the water that came in and out of that port. Ween Air was the only commercial airline in Alaska in those days. I talked tourists into paying a little more money to fly from Fairbanks uh, up to the Arctic Circle, or, uh, up to the Arctic Ocean, since they had already spent so much money and had come so far. We curtained off uh, small sleeping spaces in an abandoned one-room abandoned uh, schoolhouse and uh, stuffed the tourists in there like sardines in a tin. We overnighted in the Point Barrow, which is 300 kilometers east along the coast from present-day Prudhoe Bay. In those days, Prudhoe Bay and its pipeline uh, did not exist. I collected uh, my cut of $10 a head and thought I was getting rich. Everybody uh, wanted uh, to uh, ride across the Arctic Circle into the land of the midnight sun. This is a delayed time exposure showing that the sun never goes down below the horizon. Trouble is, uh, it is 24-hour darkness in the winter. Point uh, Barrow was where the famous pair, Wiley Post and Will Rogers, uh, died. Uh, Post was the first to fly solo around the world, and he later discovered the jet stream. Rogers uh, was a, f a famed actor and musician. With a crowd watching, Post always loved uh, to accelerate straight up with his plane, but he didn't realize that the cold temperature uh, that day would freeze up his engine. The engine stopped and the plane nosed downward, and both were dead seconds after the takeoff, and the world in 1935 was in shock. Uh, you're looking here at the Matnuska Valley uh, near Anchorage, uh, which is famous for growing huge crops, big pumpkins, for example. And it's all due to uh, the warm coastal weather and the 24-hour sun in the summertime. Haynes is just down the coast from Skagway, and it's very scenic there. There's a scenic road. You can get to Haynes by ship from Skagway, or you can drive from the Alaska Highway down. Either way, it is a very scenic kind of trip.
There's a bald uh, eagle uh, preserve near Haynes. And I took a few pictures. So look at the bald eagle in the lower left of this uh, photo. Uh, I then put my telephoto on my camera and uh, took uh, the next picture of this same bird. Here we are, uh, same bird. If you're going to take any kind of wildlife photos, uh, you really have to have some kind of a telephoto on your camera. Uh, here's a few more photos uh, of that highway that runs down uh, to Haynes. That's another travelogue uh, we've done on the great north country uh, of both Canada and the United States. Uh, so uh, if you liked it, uh, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and we'll let you know uh, when we're coming uh, back with uh, more uh, uh, travelogues.